So joining me this week on Talk To Me is the Mayor of Waterloo, Ontario, Mayor Dave Jaworski. Mr. Mayor, thanks so much for being on the show. Awesome to be here. So obviously it's just kind of about, been about a year now since things kind of went full lockdown, right? I remember that player in the NBA um, got COVID and then all of a sudden the hockey league. And when the, I remember when the sports started to go, it became really clear and it was a matter of days. And then soon after that, everything was kind of shut down, right? So um, he we're heading into the summer now. It's beautiful, right? People in Canada, people are kind of getting itching a bit to get out, right? And obviously we're in a much better place, but we still need to be a bit vigilant. So what is this summer kind of looking like as far as social gatherings and safety? Well, you know, as I reflect on the last uh, year, certainly we can be thankful for everyone either personally being safe or keeping our frontline workers safe, helping those in our long-term care and keeping them safe. And uh, today the message is, is not any different. You know, we still need to stay safe. Wave two, wave three, uh, different variants. Uh, uh, unfortunately, that not much has changed there. We're into a new normal though. And I think we can look forward to hope, to the, the sunny days and getting out there. But my message to people is certainly take it easy and be careful. Um, social gatherings and events, uh, they, they won't be very prevalent this, uh, this summer. Unfortunately, the, uh, the Busker Festival, which relies on gatherings to come see the buskers, that's gonna be postponed yet another year. Um, but the Sunlight Jazz Festival, Canada's largest free jazz festival here, which is normally just outside my window here at Waterloo City Hall, it's gonna take place uh, this year at a drive-in over at Bingham's for one year only where people will be able to drive in, stay in their cars and stay safe. So just the innovation that we have in our arts and culture and business sector has been so impressive. But what people can do in addition to that is to you know go on our trails, uh, go cycling, um, going for walks, it, it, that is key. Um, exploring the Grand River and the trails of the Grand River. You know, it's sort of uh, in many cities, the river that runs through it is sort of the heartbeat of the city. Yet here in, in Waterloo and in Kitchener, we really haven't made enough of the Grand River. So this is a good year to go explore the Grand River, maybe get into some canoeing and uh, or fishing or even just going for walks by it. I think that's uh, important. And uh, another thing people can do, which is normally one of my favorite activities on Earth Day, is take it out your, your garbage picker and to go for a walk along my uh, neighborhood streets there, like Keith's Way, and to, to, to clean it up. And I think that's something that we can do. It's, uh, you know, very rewarding, quite honestly. And uh, you can still say, stay safe with gloves and proper protection, and then always come home and use your hand sanitizer, and we can all stay safe and still do good and have fun. Day. Excellent. Yeah. And are there any word, I know I've been looking, checking websites for my son, um, um, obviously, these things are always in flux, but um, will there be limited then organized sports and camps this summer also? Well, that's a, that's a great question. So, uh, you know, uh, Jan and I had two boys and very athletic. Uh, they, they get that from their mom. And uh, that's something that uh, we would always do in the summer for us. It was uh, soccer, lacrosse and uh, inline hockey. And uh, what always impressed me is Moses Springer isn't our newest arena. But the, the team there, Team City Waterloo, would clean it up and it looks so fresh and new. Um, but I have a word for you. If you haven't had kids in inline hockey, it smells the worst. That sport of those kids sweating in there, it's 25 Celsius. And uh, you just can't clean the hockey gloves and the skates and the helmets. It just, they can't go in the washer. Um, but what we're doing, and we ran it last year safely, our summer camps, we dispersed amongst all of our facilities kept them in small cohorts and ran them safely. Dave. I think that's really the message. Last year, we were able to run them safely. And so we've opened up our summer camps with 923 spots, which uh, do go quickly. And uh, all things being equal, we're going to run it safely again this year because I know parents depend on it. And that's why we wanted to uh, uh, do it last year because parents so depend on it. And it's a great way to get the kids uh, socialized and with schools running safely uh, generally, um, we, we know it's possible, but uh, uh, to, to talk about uh, sports, that's uh, really governed by um, the provincial government guidelines through medical officers of health. Uh, it really is unfortunate uh, for the uh, kids involved in sports over the winter, a lot of practicing, only practicing. And I know from uh, being a, a dad, 
the kids just love to play 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 the sports and uh, do the, all the athletics and practicing is sort of what they have to. And so I, I really feel for that. But boy, I'd love to go see a great uh, kids soccer game, lacrosse, uh, any of those sports that are out there because uh, our kids really need it for their mental health. Absolutely. Yeah. And from what I know, there are some stuff going, but, but as you said, more practice oriented setups and such. In yeah. terms of um, obviously uh, post-secondary education in this region, obviously one of the big economic drivers, right? We have three big schools here, Laurier, Conestoga and Waterloo. Um, what are some of the biggest things you think in getting things back to normal in, in the future, six months, a year down the line, what are kind of the main challenges in getting things back on track? Well, if I look at City of Waterloo as being a resilient uh, city, we can really look to our post-secondary institute that you mentioned for that resiliency of the, the common thing that keeps us going, innovation that's occurring, over 150 research institutes between all of them. It's just, it's quite amazing from Perimeter Institute uh, to Water Institutes, uh, we have a lot going on here and that's really what's given us a resiliency. So I came to Waterloo in 83 and uh, to go to the University of Waterloo, math, computer science, and never left. And uh, if I reflect on that life as uh, I'm on the board of governors of both universities now, and we've had some, uh, some deep chats on this, I reflect on my friendships that have lasted a lifetime. A lot of those came from that first week of Frosh Week where you're all bonding, nobody knows each other, so you, you get to know each other. Uh, my first year of residence, and then on my co-op terms, and uh, you look at that, Dave, and you say, okay, Frosh Week didn't happen. People aren't in residence and co-op terms are done remotely over Zoom. And, uh, you know, honestly, we, we need to get back to some in-person learning and the universities and colleges, they're, they're going to do it safely. And I think that's really what, uh, what we're looking forward to is, uh, you know, proper, proper masking, perhaps dual masking, uh, separating out the cohorts, extra spacing. Some people want to do hybrid learning and some people want to do it in person and maybe we alternate a bit with the, uh, the professors in that. But uh, uh, both schools, uh, I think all schools are going to go back to some form of in-person learning and, uh, and that'll be a good thing. That's good for the economy. That's good for the students. And, uh, it, you know, we we're going to have to embrace the new normal. We don't know what it'll look like, but we will be embracing it. And I'm sure as Canada's Education City, we'll be one of the first to do it really well. Excellent. And um, obviously, the third thing I kind of wanted to talk about, obviously, is businesses and jobs. And so obviously a large issue. There's some businesses, you know, here in town that have, have done just fine um, during this pandemic. And then obviously, there's other ones that have not. Um, so I don't want to generalize too much, but, but what's, um, you know, what do you think are the biggest challenges facing small and mid-sized businesses right now in spring 2021? Well, in a word, cash flow. Cash flow is the key thing now. I um, was very pleased in the recent provincial budget with extra investment for our small businesses because uh, quite honestly, small businesses are the heartbeat of our community. When I served on the uh, uh, Greater KW Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, I believe that 95, 97% of our members were actually small businesses. And so we, we always think of BlackBerry and Manulife and Sun Life and Google as being the big businesses, but there's, for every one of those, there's 19 more. And, uh, and you know, we know the big ones are going to are, are gonna ride this out. They'll, they'll, they'll get through it, but it's the small ones that we all need to uh, to help out Dave. And I think that that's something that we're doing. Um, and if anything, number one is to shop local. I, I can't stress that enough to, if you have a buying decision to make, make it local um, because the, they're, the, they're the, whether they be a franchisee or an independent book uh, bookstore, uh, we really need to support them. It's uh, to put the money in their pocket to get them that cash flow that they need. Um, second to that, is certainly government support. So as I mentioned, the provincial government, federal government, they've had big, big billion dollars of packages. But even at the local level, the city of Waterloo is rolling out a $1 million fund, which for us is a big thing for, for local businesses. And the region of Waterloo, a $3 million fund over, um, over two years. And it's really to help them again with the cash flow for the PPE, to help them be innovative. And you know, if you do have a, a favorite store, 
go check out their website. I bet you over the past 12 months, that website has been completely revamped for new ways of selling, for new ways of uh, uh, getting their product or their, their uh, dining arrangements to, uh, to, to people like us. And, uh, you know, you see the signs over my shoulder. We're in this together, and that's how uh, we can best help. And number three is by staying safe. By you and I staying safe, wearing our masks, not spreading COVID, that helps us stay out of lockdown. And staying out of lockdown helps our businesses. So everything that every, each of us do on a day-to-day -day basis, by staying safe and not catching COVID, that helps small business um, indirectly, but uh, I can tell you, like uh, we talked earlier about gatherings, uh, some gatherings, they get emotional and people, they, they, they close that two meter gap and uh, that's worked against us. And that it's those kinds of blips that can just uh, get us into the wrong zone and impact all of our small businesses. So by staying safe, you're doing well. Listen, uh, Mr. Mayor, thanks so much for, for joining us today and talking a bit about summer safety during COVID, talking a bit about uh, education and also uh, business. But before we wrap it up, can you name your all-time top three favorite songs? Wow. You know, um, I, I hearken back to the years gone by. And uh, when, when I was in grade seven and eight, if we can think back that far, um, you know, that's when you would bring a record player to school. So in the days it was uh, raining, uh, the seven and eights, we'd still get in and we'd listen to records and that. And uh, I looked it up. So back then I was buying records. So 78 buying records for uh, $12. And in today's funds, that's nearly 50 bucks. So we played those records over and over and over again. And uh, that's just like a bug in your ear. So even today, when you ask me, you know, what are, what are your favorite songs? And I, I looked them up. So here we go. Van Halen, Unchained from 1981. ACDC, Back in Black from 1980. And then rolling back a couple of years, 1978, Cheap Trick, Clock Strikes 10, the live edition from Live at Budokan. And uh, those are ones that uh, I could... I, I shouldn't even say this, but I could probably sing them all today. Uh, air guitar to some of them, but uh, that's uh, a little bit behind me. But isn't it funny how that 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 music and art um, so sticks with you? And I think that's why arts and culture are so important in our community. We talked about Jazz Fest and Busker Fest, and, uh, that earlier. Those industries have been hit so hard. And uh, whatever we can do to, you know, live music. When was the last time you heard live music? We hear the symphony and and uh, uh, Numis going online, but uh, you know live music and yeah. uh, it's a tough one. It, it, it is, but uh, it's music and arts yeah. that. Uh, and those people, you know, um, I, I'm a musician, so I have some uh, experience with all of it. And unless you're the tops of the tops, which I wasn't, um, you don't make a ton of money as it is. Um, and so, you know, to take that away is I it's been really hard for that community. So. The sooner we can see some safe patios in the Waterloo region uh, with some music is going to be amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, you, a, absolutely. You know, that's uh, something that we all must look out for is uh, that bringing that arts and culture back into our lives because it's what sticks with us. So when you ask me those questions, the flood of music came back to my mind. And if you think back that that's, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's 40, those are 40 years old, those tunes. And yeah. uh, yet still remember them like, like it was yesterday. Those are really good songs. It's giving me a little bit of a, of a glimpse. Did you have long hair by any chance back then? No, <laughs> still <laughs> short and, uh, and that, you know, I worked uh, it was in, from Delhi, Ontario, tobacco capital of Canada at the point in time. But none of my friends smoked, which is kind of odd. But uh, <laughs> you know, we all listen to music. And I, I think that's, uh, you know, just a reflection on our, our growth as we all grow up that, uh, you know, uh, we're in this together. Um, we always were in this together. We need that human interaction. Got to keep it safe so we can get back to the new normal. Once again, thanks so much, Mr. Mayor, for being on the show. Um, really, really appreciate it. And have a, a great summer. Keep doing the good work you're doing. And, of course, be safe. Awesome. Thank you. Take care.